I feel like there's someone else in here. Horrible, horrible place. Violence, phantoms and witchcraft await the most haunted team in Gloucestershire. Watch Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Welcome to Most Haunted. Said to be built on the site of devil worship and witchcraft, the building behind me has many ghosts, from an evil incubus to a baby child. This place was once filled with the sounds of people drinking and much merriment. Now the only sound that can be heard is that of cries of pain. Allegedly, this is one of the most haunted places in Great Britain. And that's why I had to bring you to the Ancient Ram Inn. Situated midway between Gloucester and Bristol, the village of Wooten Under Edge contains a home of some notoriety. As well as once housing stonemasons, priests and a public house, this Grade 2 listed building is thought to date back to 1145. A family home since the 1960s, evidence suggests that this was a pagan burial site, the scene of both witchcraft and human sacrifice. This is the ancient Ram Inn at Wooten Under Edge. The only way I can describe this is as a national treasure. Um, and of course a haunted national treasure. It stands on top of an ancient spring and it's also on a crossroads of two ley lines. So this place is a place of, of earth energy. The ghost of a lady has been seen many times in the bar area. It's believed she was murdered and her body was buried under the floor. A murder took place here in the Weaver's Attic in the 1500s and since then heavy footsteps have been heard walking across the floor when there's no one here. There's been so much poltergeist activity up here, it's become a terrifying place. As I pointed to a haunted corner, a big flash came across and hit me with a terrific force. It threw me from one end of the room to the other and I was pinned up against the wall, helpless. It's thought a great deal of witchcraft and devil worship has taken place in this room and many a faithful dog has turned on its owner. This building stands on an ancient pagan burial ground. There's been witchcraft, devil worship, murders, death and torment taking place here. Recent excavations have unearthed a child's grave underneath these stairs and since then the ghostly sounds of a baby crying have been heard along with the sounds of a growling dog. And probably the most frightening of all is an incubus. They actually climb into bed with people and make their presence known during the night. My bed was on a grave and I was grabbed by the hands and pulled out the bed. That was the biggest fright I've ever had in my life. Who knows what will happen tonight if anyone goes to bed here. Joining 
leading this most haunted investigation is Brian Shepard, a psychic artist with an extraordinary ability to reproduce images from beyond the grave. Also with us in Gloucestershire is the parapsychologist Kieran O'Keefe, who will be giving us an objective assessment of tonight's events. Now, Kieran, I'm very excited because we've got the ancient Ramin behind us, um, supposedly one of the most haunted locations in Britain. Um, so many things have happened, and yet I know tonight I'm going to be scared to death. How do you feel about investigating this particular location? I'm equally excited for many different reasons. First of all, on a paranormal level, there have been so many different accounts. Poltergeist, auditory phenomena, we've also got apparitions and actual interaction with apparitions as well. So on that level, I'm very excited. Loads of different types. Also, from a parapsychologist's point of view, we've got lots of environmental phenomena at work. Because we've got such an old building like this, there is dampness. Uh, we also have lots of wood around that if there's a change in temperature might result in creaks and noises and that sort of thing. So it's kind of a hotbed of activity, both natural and paranormal. What are you hoping for as a parapsychologist tonight? What, do you, what are you wanting to happen? As a parapsychologist, I'm looking for proof. I'm looking for something to happen. And already what I've done is in a particular room where people have experienced auditory phenomena, a cat meowing. I've set up a continuous MP3 recorder to see if we pick anything up. In another room where there's been poltergeist activity, I've set up trigger objects. And there's another room where people have witnessed apparition, so we're going to have a locked off camera in there. It means that we can look back at these particular recordings, these monitorings, and see if anything occurs. So I'm quite excited to look back at that footage and, of course, the vigils. What's exciting to me is the fact that we're right by a main road. Uh, it's a residential area, there are people walking past, it's noisy, it's daytime, and yet things have already happened to the crew. For instance, Kath has just seen a dark shadow um, go by in one of the rooms. So it's daytime and things are already happening. Yeah. So goodness knows what's going to happen tonight. Spiritualist medium Derek Akora has been invited to join the team in Gloucestershire, arriving shortly before filming began and with no prior knowledge of our location. We all felt a little uneasy in our new surroundings, but knew that we couldn't delay the inevitable any longer. It was time to investigate the ancient Ram Inn. As we've just walked through from the um, the front door, different levels of residual energy. It was like pump hitting me and going past that and then hitting me again. What happened until we arrived at this point? Now, I'm very aware whether it's the location right there or all around. The first thing, and it's banging my head inside out. And it's not good and it's not nice. And yet, it seems as if we are standing in this building right now. But just for a few moments, a few seconds, I'm aware of, ma the only way I can describe it, mounds and mounds of humans, males and females, just down, lying there, and the screaming souls so I, the only way I can say now at the moment is if I'm just surrounded by death and that death the first level of it I don't know how far back this goes but it's like as if it's like as if there's that many souls lying down it's like a burial ground mm. Masses of them. 
mixture, males and females. Then that mental picture and the energies around my aura, my auric field there, that was pushed away. And now I'm here, I just feel as if I want to... Did you hear that? Above us. That was above us. Definitely above. Can I, I go up? up? So, uh, I'll go up with you. Go on, can, can you go, Kieran? Can you talk to him as a minute as well? We'll go up. Yep. Okay. I'd like to get a night vision. And um, I feel that these souls are totally not at rest, Ivy. And their energies come flowing into this ether and atmosphere, whether it be day or night. And it will cause a lot of, well, poltergeistal activity. When you say the bet about the burial ground, and you're saying it goes way back, yes, what would would it have been like a, a pit, or were they, were they actually buried in consecrated grounds? What was what was it? Why were they all buried in the was same that, place? Was that level okay? You know, you've heard me talking about pagan worship mm -hmm. and pagans, and I feel as if I want to go with that level of time, and they got people all covered up. You know, headgear, the lot, you know, and it's like as if they walk around, I can hear, or I could hear, although that's gone now, I could hear, like, um, sounds of chanting and things like this. There's an energy here, and I, all I want to do, take that away from me, you. Take it away. I've got someone wanting to slash and cut at every one of us here in memory. And I go into this area and there's a man and he's slashing and he's cutting. And it's like as if he's cutting every part of the body and he's dumping the torsos and it's just one after the other. And the stench of the reality, the blood, is so evident to me here. And it, it's making me feel as if I want to be, you know, vomit, be yeah. sick. Yeah. Um, take that off me. Take it off me, please. I'm very cold here. I'm yes. freezing. You're cold. I'm very, very cold. It's nasty. The atmosphere is nasty. We've got a, a malignant um, activity here. Um, I can hear, I don't know if anyone else... I hope you can. I can hear this rustling and chanting, and it, it's there's no two ways about it. It's satanic. It's satanic. Now I'm coming into those energies, and we've got. Dare we? Oh. What? Oh my God. What's the matter? I just heard a male's voice saying, Dare we? Come high, dare we come high. The same fate will await you. We've got to be more careful in this building tonight, all of us, than we've ever been in any investigation to date with Most Haunted. Really? We've got so many mixed activities, not residual energy, that are against us being here. And Sam said that we have to be so diligent and not to separate below twos in the investigation today and tonight. Was this a forewarning of the danger that lay ahead? The loud thud remained a mystery, with Kieran and Carl finding no explanation in any of the rooms above us. Already worried about the prevalence of evil and vindictive spirits in the building, we certainly couldn't have prepared for the horrors that nightfall would bring at the ancient Ram Inn. I feel like I'm waiting for something to happen. Many buildings lay claim to being Britain's most haunted, and Gloucestershire's ancient Ram Inn has already sent warnings of what we could all expect. 
with Derek already disturbed by the satanic spirits that he had sensed in the bar, we decided to move up to the witch's room, the alleged scene of regular apparitions. Now as we come into this room here, I feel on a, on, on a lot of occasions um, activity of a spirit person that comes here. I'm not saying it's the only spirit person that comes into this room with the spreaders and what have you, but I feel as if that we've got a man that went wrong. And what I mean by that is because just for the moment as I come into the energy, I feel as if I'm cloaked over here and my head's covered with the hood. And without a doubt, I've got the energies that comes here regular and is not in visitation. It is definitely a person who is classified as a monk. However, this monk condition is not of the light. You know the way he's, he's thinking? Yeah. He's a... He's a a, a twisted, nasty soul who was twisted in life, and a, he's another bad spirit that's here. A person that doesn't want to move on, probably fears that if he does, okay, has he? Has he done this? I, oh, God. What, what, what? I've just got... Then... A man of the cloth, a churchman, a priest who is confronting this monk. And whatever this monk did had this priest go down on his knees and try to crawl out and wouldn't, went out of the building. And he, he wouldn't come back in again. And he's so, so belligerent, this soul, his energy, is to say what he can do, and he can do that to the men of light, of God. So what, what can he do with us? Are you saying that the priest and the monk existed at the real time, or in real time, or the priest came in... You know, to try and exercise this. I, I feel the energy the way or? it was given to me then is if the priest has come in to rid this place. I see. Right. And he, whatever his level of negative power, uh, has sent this priest reeling and wouldn't come back here. Whatever he told him, what he did to him, he, he was very proud of bringing the priest to his knees. And I feel the priest um, splashed him with holy water and he, he laughed and screamed at him and something happened to him that I don't feel he is, uh, the effect of it would have um, left him for a long, long time. And that's because of this... Is there a name he's with evil. this person? He's evil. Name with this monk? <laughs> I'll keep on yeah. asking. Yeah. I'm sure he's going to unveil himself here tonight, if he. Mm. He's not alone, like I said. There's a number of them here. Ooh. It's this atmosphere in this bedroom here tonight. I can just, I just sense it and know that um, naughtiness at what level is going to happen here tonight. Without a doubt. What? Noises, everything sh should happen in this place. There's, um, I wouldn't be at all surprised whether the likes of this bed here is shifted, knocked, whoever sleeps in it. Um, most definitely would appear, probably to someone in the physical now, it was like poltergeistal. Has Derek detected the ancient ram's brief flirtation with reverend souls? Although not known for its evil inhabitants, it was once a priest's home, and just two decades ago, the Bishop of Gloucester's exorcism of this building proved unsuccessful.
Worse still, we're about to enter the bishop's room, supposedly the most haunted part of the house. Just as we walk through this um, level of these doorways here, you become aware that come racing in here, what I was picking up the energy of earlier on. And I can put the two of them together now. There are a lot of energies, a lot of things happening all on this level. But the woman, she, Come into yeah, the, room the woman who, who is here, that spirit energy, the one that practiced the witchcraft, mm -hmm. she is an accomplice here of the animal kingdom. Yes, he's a spirit, all right, but he was a nasty, still is, negative, black, big black cat that I feel if anyone was here physically, they would feel they may end up with scratches if they were slipping, wondering what was going on. And this evil of this cat, okay, is most definitely in legion with this spirit witch woman. It was her cat. Throughout the day, psychic artist Brian Shepard had spent time in the ancient ram. His sensory drawings were to prove fascinating, given the energies that Derek had just felt. I mean, a lot of us have cats and have done over the years. Mm. I don't know if that's heavily associated with uh, this particular building, but there's also a lot of blackness, almost like indistinguishable shapes. Okay. It's fascinating. That is so... Oh, ooh, ooh. No. And then, no, no, ne neither do I. But as I sat there, and I felt very strongly that from my right shoulder, there was someone watching. Oh. That this, and it's a woman's face, and it, it felt to me as though there's almost a suggestion here of witchcraft. Despite the fact that no pets actually live in the building, this wasn't our only direct reference to this mysterious cat. Incredibly, Derek had sensed this feline presence earlier, and Kieran detected a remarkable audio phenomenon in the witch's room. I know what they're doing, these souls, okay? They are... <laughs> The cunning, the crafty, probably the most cunning and listening very intently, cunning that, that we've ever encountered in all of the locations we've been. Are you worried? Yeah, I am. Um, and I feel as if they're really, honestly, if they really are going to live on tonight's energies with the crew. So please, please, I can't say it enough. Be extra careful, every one of us, where you're placing your foot in, if we're going up the stairs or down the stairs, and what have you. And I can't emphasise enough that never, ever, for one person to be in any area alone. Because they'll all come in, and who knows what's going to happen. Okay. So you picked up on this lady who was involved in witchcraft. Oh, yeah. What what Steeped time? Can you give us a time period of when she would have... 1284. 1284, she Thank was Thank you, here. Sam. 1284. Mm -hmm. Can Sam tell but us who she was? Who was she? Can you give me the name? Elsbeth, 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 Elsbeth Grant, Elsbeth Grant. What year can can Sam tell us what year she died? Her life. Can I tell you? Her life. Thank you. Her life. Um was taken from her. Okay. In 
in her 40, 49th year. What's the matter? There's a boy child and a little girl in water. The hearts we've taken from these two kiddies. How old were they? Three and five. And sister. And were they killed here? Yes. And then there's they... been a lot of massacre, a lot of bloodletting, a lot of murders, callous, darkest form of monstrosities that's happened here. And even some of those responsible for doing those acts are still walking around in this atmosphere at times, living off their experiences. How many souls would you say are grounded here that walk around this, this property? Well, up to now, I, I felt as if we're talking maybe anything from six, seven, seven energies. There's more than that, but I feel we have the visitation as well. Okay. Rituals of murderous bloodshed abound the ancient Ram Inn. The discovery of witchcraft is worrying, but this Gloucestershire Inn has yet to reveal its true nature. An evil intent that will frighten one of us beyond all comprehension. It's a horrible, horrible, horrible place. What's this? Get out! Get out! Get out. Get out. Gloucestershire's ancient Ram Inn has sent a wave of apprehension throughout the most haunted team. The mood certainly wasn't lifted by Derek's bleak forewarning that quite simply, no one is safe. With cameras switched to night vision, we headed into the attic, where items of furniture have inexplicably moved across the room. Now we've entered an area in which is is deplorable, is 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 nasty, and is negative, the most negative aspect Why? about this whole area, this atmosphere is abhorrent to me. You're right. Yes. Okay. And you know, right here now, at the moment, becoming very quite quickly aware of a stench here. And that stench is just coming from virtually underneath us here. Oh, God. I can hear, um, coming from the residual, I can hear this, like, it's not so much a chant, but uh, males' voices. Look, it's just, it seems to just be happening below us here. All round this whole area, it's a stench of negativity. Oh God! Oh bless, bless, bless! Oh holy! What? This energy—it seems as if I've got um, at this moment in time, I've got someone who's around me who is. In my feelings here, the the main instigator of all this cruelty, this barbaric evil, the true essence of evil exists in this area, and it hasn't shifted an inch, and they did terrible, terrible things to souls here 
I feel very disorientated in this room. I feel yes. very. There was m there was mass. I feel mass death uh, of the cruelest kind that has taken place in this area up here. God, I feel so dizzy. Yeah. I feel like I'm on a boat. How does everybody else feel? Stuart, how do you feel? Um, I came for a wander around earlier on with John. John was talking to me and I felt very heavy. I had pain shooting across the top of my eyebrows. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting that. And I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to interrupt you and Derek. But at the moment, I've got these pains that are coming back now. But it's only when I come up here, mm -hmm. it's when I feel... Um, sharp pains running across me, uh, front of my head. Do you want to go a little bit further the other yeah. way? Okay. Okay. The level of activity in the building was starting to escalate, and as we move further up into the attic, all our cameras bizarrely recorded sound, but no pictures. It was only later that we discovered this strange 40 second break in our tape, but it gave us yet another indication of the peculiar aura that this building seems to hold. Did you hear that in there? Walking across. Oh, yes, there's oh. someone walked across. Hurry up, hurry up. Oh, can you feel it, girl? Can you feel it here? Someone walked into here, Kieran. Feel the cool here, Kieran. Yeah, it is cooler in here. Describe what you saw, Derek. Okay, I I made out the um the shape, the energy. It was a lady. Um. She was um. Okay, in height, because of what I saw, the shape. Um, she would be about five foot three, long, unkempt hair. I'd say the face of more masculine looking than fe you know female, and it's like as if she just she just wants to really really um, harm us. Is this the same lady that you picked up earlier on? Yes, I feel this is the lady that um, most definitely practiced witchcraft. It's colder in here. Concerned that this chilling environment houses angry and satanic souls, if any activity is to be encountered here tonight, then will it be this witch that makes her presence known? With this in mind, Kieran felt that using a Ouija board may aid our attempts at communicating with the woman that Derek has called Elspeth Grant. With Alex, Rachel and myself volunteering to participate in his trial experiment, Kieran explains the correct method of performing this ancient practice. It's just another form of communicating with the dead. It's a tradition that's been around since early spiritualism time in the late 1800s. This is more of an investigation into Ouija, but basically when you're doing it, just relax, be open to messages, whatever comes through, okay? And just move. If the glass starts moving, you know, don't don't be, act surprised. Just go with it. Go with where the glass is moving. And I'll be making a note of the letters, okay? So don't worry about trying to interpret them. And now I just ask out, yeah? Is there anybody here in this room with us? Is there anybody there? Push the glass towards the first letter of your name, please. Hmm? Okay, just go with it. There is somebody here, please. Please, can you tell us who you are? Oh Our experiment using the Ouija board had proved interesting. 
The glass continued to move dramatically, although no sense could be made of the answers that we were given. Kieran and I decided to join Derek and Richard upstairs in the bishop's room. The alleged scene of both witchcraft and devil work. But would we encounter either Elspeth Grant or the demonic incubus? Elspeth Grant, if you can hear us and you can see us, please do the honour of trying to communicate with us now. We're here so that we can get your side of the story, so we can hear why you're here, why you still live in this house. Let me say, just in this room, there's got to be the, the strongest atmosphere we've had for a long term, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am sitting here, I am shaking. I'm hating every minute of this. It's a horrible, horrible, horrible place. There's a, a great feeling within me of a, a ne negative expectancy of it doing so. And when it happens, it's bang, 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 not just once. And I don't mean just sounds. God. I have to say, I'm hating this. Yeah. I'm hating it. I'm not. I'm not enjoying this one bit. It's sinister, isn't it? It's just really nasty. Elspeth Grant, we know you're here. Show yourself for all your wickedness. If you're so brave and you feel so strong, show yourself to the whole team, to the whole crew. What will happen? To the door, there's a welcome door. Did it hit your car? No, no, I'm sitting dead still with both elbows on look in the seat. Here we here. go then, it's still not in then. Did the door whack you then? Yeah, it saw me. I thought you just Oh, I'm down here on the set right down below you look. You're right, Derek. 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 Go to the barn. You're right, Derek. Yeah, I'm okay, Evie. I'm okay. I'm not letting that. I'm not letting that too close. This is her. She wants her. She wants us to go to the barn. Extremely worried by the menacing presence that attempted to possess Derek, if we do follow the command and go to the barn, how sure can we be that no harm will come our way? God, there's someone else in here. Hey! We've spent every second of this investigation living on our nerves. This is a building where no one dares to be left alone. So with the words, go to the barn, still fresh in their minds, Derek, Carl, Stuart and John nervously proceed to this part of the ancient ram. And for one of them, this is a decision that will haunt them for the rest of their lives. I've got like a, a headache. Yeah, I feel fucking close in here, God. Yeah. Do you know what I feel? What? I feel like there's someone else in here. 
Yeah, I really do. I feel like someone's over there. You get the impression that somebody is in here with us. Yeah. Somebody is, is watching us. I don't, yeah. often, I don't often turn off and think that, to be honest. Yeah, you're trying to say, Paul. Yeah. Do you know what I feel so... I, I really do feel like I've got... Like a... It feels like I've got a... Something pounding me inside of my head, mm. but a weight on my shoulder. Really heavy. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's psychic like pressure. There's, without a shadow of a doubt, there is something in there. Yeah. There is. There's something watching us now. Yeah. Well, we're still here. I feel as though the, the, when you get that sense as though there is something, you don't know where they are. No. You can't see them. You can't feel them as such, but you know there's something here. If there's anybody here now in this farm with the four of us, please make yourself be known. Show yourself. Move an object. Throw an object. I've never known a place like this in the history. As long as most haunts have been going, I've never known anything to be as active as this place we're in today. Please show yourself to us. Either by moving something, by touching one of us, by using all of our energies, collectively or singular. What? I really feel like something's I've behind. Something. I just said I was going to. I've just seen something over the back of Carl. Yeah. I was just about to say, I thought something was behind me. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it, it was a red light going across. Yeah. It wasn't off John's camera. It was above your head, but it went at the back. Mm -hmm. And it went from left to right. Well, it's often said about spiritual movements, especially where negative energies are concerned. The colour red of light, okay? is denoted to the not <coughs> demonic um, presence generally. This place is definitely empty. Come on, you spiritual negative cretins. Let's see what you really can do. We're here in presence in the group of four to challenge you. See if you can hurt us. Sorry to say this, but there is something there. I don't know what it is, but I've been looking at this now for the last week, two, three minutes, and I don't know what the hell's there, but I can feel there is something there. I don't know what it is. I'm drawn to that area here. Mm -hmm. Be careful, though. To this round there, I don't know if there is, it might be my imagination, I'm not too sure. But well, just short of manifestation, yeah. because we're all experiencing different things, um, that is, is stating that the reality is that there is spiritual energy, negative energy moving about here in this barn. Yeah, I can feel that, I feel so... I'm light-headed now. Yeah. I feel light, I feel dizzy. These are all the experiences that come, come with um, activity I do. around. This is exactly how I feel now. Yeah. I'm being totally honest. I'll open up and I'm telling you exactly how I feel. I'm not lying, I'm not no, catching no. up with the cameras or nothing. No. You know, I feel like I'm waiting for something to happen. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. And I don't know, but I don't know what. I've got no. I've got no reason to think that. Leave him down! Leave him! 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 Leave him
I felt him being walloped the second time. He was hit fully oh, in the chest and the ribs here. Right out loud. Was that, a, was that a physical blow? Yes. Yeah. Stupid I came head. over it and it knocked me back and got him again. Oh. You okay now, Stu? Sam's got him away. All right. He's away now. He's lost a shoe as well. He has as well, yeah. That was one almighty <laughs> wallop. I can't get my breath. All right, Stu, you're going to be all right. Stu, do you want to hang on, mate? No. You sure? No, I'm fine. Just let me, right. sit me up. Yeah, OK. Just sit me up. Right. Oh. <sighs> I need... Yeah. All right, just sit up. All right. Just, 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 I'm gonna sit behind you, mate. I'm gonna sit behind you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You can lean back on me. Just lean. Just lean your weight on me. Dude, right? what was the f was that in there? You, you got hey. the you got the full brunt. He hit you, right? And I, you flew past me. As I come after you, he knocked me back, and then he hit him again. <sighs> You see, we're shouting, we're ridiculing. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm crying. Come on, you're all right. Oh, oh, you must be scared. Come on. I um, do. <laughs> this violent attack was the most relentless ever witnessed on Most Haunted. We may never know who or what had attacked Stuart, but there was no doubt that he'd been left severely shocked by this experience. Fearful of another attack, Derek, Carl and John rushed to leave the building. But the source of this evil action is still prevalent. Please, grab an hold of the back of my shirt here. Yeah. For f**k's sake. Come on, through here, guys. Through here, guys. We get, get the man out. Sit down. Sit down. There's a couple of steps. Sit, a couple of steps. Yeah, Look at this, it's chopping his shit. Wash the steps. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Come on. Get out. Out. Get back and leave us alone, you Come on. OK, keep going, keep going. Get out. We're out, we're out. The time that started, I can remember what had happened. From me actually falling down, yeah. from the point of impact, I'd been punched in the chest, I'd been winded. And as I went down, I got punched again yeah. then. So I got winded twice, and when I was, I knew exactly what was going on. Yeah. I was like a, I was like a little skid in a, 
uh, of a like, young kid in a playground getting picked on and beaten up by his friends. Yeah. You know, because when I was down, all I felt as I was being kicked constantly in the <laughs> stomach. And that was why I was screaming the way I was screaming. Yeah. We were staggered at the response that this building had delivered. From the moment we arrived, we knew that something wasn't right. Our locked off cameras did record a few light anomalies, most notably in the attic. And throughout our investigation, each of us could feel a manifestation of the dark demons that still lie within. But this ruthless attack on Stuart and his subsequent terror made us each sick with fear. All in all, um, it was a fascinating place to visit. Something as old as that, for me, was, was absolutely fantastic. Brian Shepard's drawings, very interesting, um, came up with um, a picture which was supposedly a witch. I felt very strongly that from my right shoulder there was someone watching. Terrifying things in the, in the Mayflower barn, awful things happened to Stuart. Right. Oh! I don't think I've ever seen any of the crew in such a state as Stuart was after that incident, which was, I think, the only thing you can say is terrifying. I'm not getting away from it. No, let it. me stay here. No, I let felt. me stay. <laughs> Last night's investigation at the ancient Ram Inn was fantastic. It was probably one of the best investigations that I've been on. Stuart was actually physically attacked by a spirit. The reaction of the crew that were with him in the barn and certainly the footage and the way Stuart reacted after the attack shows it to be, for me, one of the most fascinating paranormal occurrences that has happened so far on the shoots. It's fascinating because it is allegedly some sort of interaction with a spirit. The spirit was actually attacking, punching, kicking, whatever you want to say, one person in the group. The other thing that's fascinating about it is, unlike a lot of paranormal phenomena, there's no natural explanation for it. It's not because of temperature difference, it's not because of EMF, it's not because of infrasound. So, no natural explanation for me springs to mind. And for that reason alone, that makes Stuart's testimony and what actually occurred the most fascinating thing. A chilling scene of witchcraft, sacrifice, and now violent phantoms. The ancient ram is one investigation that some of us can never forget. Until next time, sleep tight. and frightened exclusive to Living TV. Coming next on Living TV, most haunted weekend continues.